Hey YouTube, welcome to Biking Preparedness. This is Pastor Joe Fox. Hey, today what I want to talk to you about is actions you can take, uh, things you can do uh, to deal with the threat of terrorism, if you will. Um, you know, some of you live in cities, some live in suburbs, some live out in the boonies, uh, you're all on the internet. And so what can you do? You know all about, you know, you're probably following as closely as I am, probably closer, since I do live out in the boonies, uh, the Boston bombings, right? And, you know, supposedly these two Chechen uh, 20-somethings uh, that did it radicalized Islam. They may have others, they may not, helping them. And you probably heard the news by now that Canada has just had a massive arrest where they've arrested two people <laughs> who were plotting to do something you know, with trains, right? Here's what I can tell you. You're gonna be seeing a lot more terrorism. You're gonna be um, seeing about it, hearing about it, reading about it on the news and, and things like that. And you're gonna feel like uh, you've gotta do something. You know, maybe I need to carry my Glock everywhere or, you know, maybe I need to carry a first aid kit super robust so I can take care of people if something happens or you know maybe like me you carry gear wherever you go you know bug out bags get me home bags whatever hey I'm not saying those are bad things um, but what I am saying is you might be being played you know terrorists are by their nature weak the whole reason they resort to terrorism uh, to get their political means done is because they don't have the political power to do it without terrorism, and they don't have the uh, conventional military power to succeed, and so instead they commit acts of terror. So it's a, it's a tactic, if you will, of the weak. You know what your odds of getting blown up by a terrorist are? I mean, they're infinitesimally small. You have a much better chance getting killed doing what I'm doing right now. driving, right? I mean, if you're worried about dying, you ought to be worried about how you drive and wearing your seatbelt and stuff like that, paying attention, which I am doing. But every terrorist attack that occurs is broadcast over and over and over and over and over. One, the terrorists want that. They want to get their message across. What was these two Chechen brothers' message? We don't know, do we? We haven't heard that. The other reason it's going to be broadcast, I can think of two right away. One is it sells newspapers. It sells airtime. People want to see it, and so you're going to hear about it over and over and over again. And then, quite frankly, the other reason is because it serves the government's uh, desires when they can broadcast how dangerous things are, and then they can sell you the need for more security, more homeland security, more intrusion in your life. Because while your chances of being affected directly by a terrorist, you know, your chances of being shot or blown up or, you know, captured or something like that by a terrorist are so infinitesimally small as to not even matter. Your chances of uh, being impacted by the government's reaction to the terrorists is almost guaranteed. You know, the government will use this as a, as a, as an excuse to come after, you know, more photos, more, uh, you know, biometric data to be collected and stored. We need to follow people's emails. We need to tap their phones. We need to do this. We need to do that. I heard uh, some talk show host just talking about how we should hold these these two people as enemy combatants as opposed to American citizens who committed the crime of killing people and maiming people and blowing people up. No, we don't. We have a constitution and we should follow the constitution for all American citizens. And so you are going to see the effects of the government reacting to the terrorist more uh, then you are going to see direct effects of terrorism on yourself. So think about that. Where's the real problem coming from? Um, but I told you I was going to tell you what you can do. Here's the deal. You know, when terrorists do a bomb or something like that, they don't do it out here.
They don't do it out in the boonies. There's no bang for the buck. You know, if they set off a bomb out there, it might hit a cow. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. You know, if they set it off in the, the little town I live outside of in Kansas when I'm there, or the little town that I live outside of uh, in the Ozarks when I'm down there, nobody would notice. There's nobody there. They go after the population centers. Guess what? I told you that the government reaction to terrorism is going to be the real problem. Well, guess where that is mostly focused? On the population centers. And so your number one thing is don't be where people are. That, that's the best defense for terrorism. You know, if there's a crowd, you shouldn't be there. If there's a crowd to uh, go to work in the morning, that's called rush hour, you probably shouldn't be there. Go somewhere else. There's no rush hour where I live. Um, if there's a crowd at the movie theater, don't go there. You know, it's opening night. Okay, you can see it in two days and everything will be fine. You don't need to go where the crowds are there. Avoid crowds. If you avoid crowds, that's going to take care of you getting involved in a terrorist incident, most likely, and it's going to significantly lessen uh, the intrusions on your civil rights by the, by the government, you know? Nobody puts cameras out where I live at, you know, the end of 10 miles of bad dirt road. Uh, again, the only thing they'd get pictures of is the very occasional vehicle and cows, you know, and hawks and things like that. And so, am I telling you to move again? Yeah, <laughs> I am. You know, if you'd have moved before, you wouldn't have to move now. Um, you wouldn't have to worry. I do not even consider terrorism where I live. Don't even think about it. it doesn't even cross my mind for me personally or my people uh, that we're going to get involved in a terrorist incident. Even when we go into town. <laughs> you know? Because like I said, we're in the middle of nowhere. And so, hey, try to move. If you can't move, and I believe me, I've heard all the excuses why you can't do it. I did. Um, if you can't move... You can still do things to avoid crowds. Don't go to places during peak times. Don't be around a lot of people. And uh, be ever vigilant of your rights. They're disappearing rapidly. And today's Chechen will be tomorrow's Christian or, you know, Hebrew Israelite or somebody like that that they decide they're going to waterboard because we need to know what you, what you know. All right. I'll see you out there.